I have some great news. Just the other day, Gooseworks and Glitch had a few new posts on Twitter. They may completely turn our expectations and ideas about the continuation of amazing digital circus upside down. Glitch are cooking up something special for us. Also, I found out that Princess Lolilalu can be human, and I will prove it to you. By the way, somewhere in the video, I hit a picture of Pomni, and anyone who finds it will get another secret information about the second episode of Digital Circus. As I said, after the release of Murder Drones episode, we will be getting a lot of new news, teasers, and comments about the next episodes of Digital Circus. And to start with, Glitch posted a screenshot on their account, which shows that the pilot has reached the milestone of 300 million views on YouTube. Now that everyone's attention is once again focused on Digital Circus, I'm sure that in honor of the anniversary number of views, the creators will prepare something big and interesting for us. According to my predictions, we will be given the latest significant facts and news about the next episode, as well as we will most likely get new teasers or, in the best case scenario, we will finally see the final trailer of the second episode. And the news doesn't end there. Already on her Twitter, Gooseworks has posted a new post warning us. She said that we should be prepared for the continuation of the series to be completely different from the pilot. What could this post mean? Could it be that the new episodes will be much longer in terms of timing? 3D animation is a very labor-intensive process, but as Gooseworks mentioned earlier, the story plan for the rest of the series has already been thought out and prepared. I'm sure the Glitch team will surprise us with awesome new episodes, maybe bigger than we've been waiting for. This post also led me to believe that we are getting confirmation of the theory that further events of the show will be presented in a much darker way compared to even the first episode that left countless questions and mysteries. After all, I'd like to remind you, Digital Circus is based on the post-apocalyptic I have no mouth, but I must scream narrative, and we have absolutely no idea what is currently happening to people outside of digital space. However, the abandoned corridors of the office shown in the pilot, which looks pretty old, also the almost rusty computer doesn't bode well. One thing is for sure, we are in for a lot of innovations and changes in the second episode, Based on this, I have a theory that Pomni will not be the main character for all episodes. For the entire first episode, she seemed like the character closest to losing herself and abstracting herself. I've speculated many times before that this could happen and be a drastic plot twist that would strike a chord with many viewers. I would like to say that seeing what happens on behalf of other players would be very interesting and important for character revelation. For example, what goes on in the minds of the silent Gangle and Kinger anyway? Most of the time they prefer to remain silent unless directly addressed. I'm very interested in how the sad and cheerful masks affect Gangle's behavior. It's possible that for the most part, it's not her mood that determines the mask, but rather it's the mask that determines the character's acting disposition. We've also seen that until Kinger is given an errand to complete, he tends to be at a distance, separate from the rest of the characters. What he thinks about, why he fears the presence of others, and what he does while alone. A narrative on their behalf would do a wonderful job of shedding light on all these details. But what if I told you that this post could be a message from Gooseworks to us theory-building people? On her YouTube channel, Gooseworks recently released a video in which she clearly expressed her negative opinion of the poor quality third-party content on Digital Circus. This means that the creators of the series are watching the theories and debunkings appearing on YouTube. Many theorists, like myself, have often come up with the idea that the format of each episode will be structured similarly to the first, one location and one set of secondary characters per episode. I think Gooseworks may be hinting to us that we're drawing the wrong conclusions. From what we have so far, in the new episodes, we need to prepare for unexpected plot twists. A lot of these events that we were not supposed to know about based on the pilot episode. So what do you think of Glitch and Gooseworks' latest posts? What should we expect to see a heat? And that's not all the theories for today. I've theorized before, that all people are in the digital circus for a reason. Many characters have to overcome their emotional and personal problems that they were unable to deal with before entering the virtual tent. An idea came to me. If the developers of the digital circus are following the adventures of the characters in the game, then the NPCs that Kane confronts them with are also there for a purpose. You know, it's common for game developers in the real world to create their own avatars or have their own game accounts in the game universe and the developer's account may have access to things that regular players never knew they had. From these facts, I have a theory that Princess Lolilalu is either one of the game's creators or has special assignments from them. This explains why Princess Lolilalu appears to be such an important person. She owns Candy Canyon on, and it also becomes clear why she is guarded by wooden characters who are indifferent to all the other people in the digital circus. Many of you will object to me. Gooseworks and Tumblr asked, 
are most of the new characters NPC? The answer was, they are all NPC. It's important to realize, in order to not give us all the plot information at our fingertips so easily, Gooseworks could have been deceiving us, as I told you before. Furthermore, creator avatars could quietly fall under the definition of NPC. Just because a character is an NPC doesn't mean the creators of the game can't control it. But then why did Loli Lalu come to our heroes? Aside from inviting them on an adventure in Candy Canyon, the developer could have interfered with what was going on, because Pomni was noticeably to everyone, on her first day, too actively looking for a way out of the digital world. I think Loli Lalu could be making sure that Pomni stops looking for a way out and gets distracted by other things. In addition, Kinger and Jax may also deserve special attention from the developers. It is possible that Kinger, while no one is around him, is trying to reach the same state in which Pomni was able to pass through the exit door, find herself in the office space, and fly into the void. At the same time, we know that Jax has a key to far more than just his room. We don't know why he has other keys. The thought occurs to me that Jax is looking for something in other people's rooms that could lead him to the exit. By creating difficulties for the other characters and behaving rudely, he distracts the attention of others, after which he quickly removes himself and acts out. The characters are left with nothing to do but solve problems. For example, by finally squashing Gangle's Mask of Joy and assigning her a task, Jax diverted her attention for the entire episode while we didn't see him. He was able to get into Gangle's room unimpeded, search her, and do whatever he wanted. For that, a huge hand that looks like a direct impersonation of the creators will remove Jax away from other people's rooms to fast food, where his search and investigation can't move forward. It could be that all the quests and adventures are really necessary so that people can overcome their psychological problems. However, there is no apparent benefit to the creators of the game. But if the adventures are only needed to keep players here for as long as possible, that sounds appealing to Kane and the developers. This way, Digital Circus won't be left without players and can always be updated with new content, bringing benefits, interest, gaining the attention of new people and, of course, potentially bringing money to the team that created it. What do you think of the new Twitter post by Gooseworks and Glitch? What's in store for us ahead of the new episode and in honor of the first episode reaching 300 million views on YouTube? Or do you think Glitch has its own teaser plan that doesn't include anniversary gifts for viewers? What is Gooseworks hinting at and what changes are in store for us? Be sure to write your theories in the comments and I'll be sure to read them because it's your comment that will probably make it into the next video. Also, don't forget to like this video and subscribe to my channel. Good luck to everyone and bye-bye.